guys, 420 Scene here, back at it again with another video. I hope everyone out there is having themselves a super stony day. Let me know what you're token on and where you're watching the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret, unlisted grow and smoke videos, like my sour D run. Or if you want to guess on 101 Grow Help Totally, check us out on Patreon. I'm going to have the link in the upper right hand corner over here. For those of you that are new to VPD, it's short for vapor pressure deficit, and it's like really important when it comes to your environmental conditions and it's also important to understand how transpiration happens and and how your environmental conditions revolve around your vpd so overwatering is always an interesting topic because sometimes it can be hard to tell if you're overwatering. This isn't an overwatering video. Well, <laughs> all right, VPD goes hand in hand with overwatering, so we gotta at least discuss it, right? It really is hard to tell sometimes if you're overwatering. So like, for example, right? Sometimes you can have too much humidity and the water vapor in the air could weigh down your leaves, especially if your humidity is too much for your stomata to handle. The stomata is those like mouth looking things that's on your leaves that like grabs all that water vapor and it like makes your leaves super puffy. We don't want super puffy, okay? So let's just say you got too much humidity in the vegetative stage. You could get that false sign of overwatering because one of the major clear signs that you're overwatering is your leaves are kind of curling down. Like they are just too heavy. And the reason for that is, like I said before, there's too much water vapor in the air that's collected from the stomata. That's why I've always preferred keeping the humidity levels as close to the middle as possible. Like 50% during veg and 50% during flowering has always been my target area. That's me personally though. The way it starts, is that for the seedling stage, they need more humidity, obviously, because you gotta keep the moisture levels up. You gotta make sure your roots don't dry. But as you progress after the first week of the seedling stage, you'll still need to keep up that humidity up there, but you can kinda, you can kinda slowly drop it a little bit. So like during the seedling stage, I like to have the humidity like 65%, maybe 70%, but if it's over 65%, I always wanna make sure that there's really good airflow. So that way I avoid getting mold in my cups or even on my seedling itself because trust me that stuff does happen and during the vegetative stage I'll try to drop it maybe like 55% and then maybe 50% and I'm gonna keep it that way even in the flowering stage so that way you have a nice equal ratio of wet versus dry wow talking about wet versus dry almost reminds me of reverb all you music production people you get what I'm talking about. You get the best of both worlds because there's not too much humidity that's going to cause my leaves to look like they're overwatered. But like at the same time, I keep the humidity up a little bit so that way your leaves don't start drying out and looking horrible because you can really tell when your leaves are drying out. They just look, they almost look kind of like blot, like not puffy, but blotchy in a way. So essentially your VPD is the amount of water vapor that the air can carry that's also relative to the temperature. Now, just to let you know, because I feel like a lot of people don't know this, I didn't know this right away. Warm air is gonna carry more moisture than cold air. So let's just say that your humidity is at 60%, your RH, your relative humidity, 60%. If your air is warm, it's always gonna carry more moisture, even though your RH levels are the same thing, 60%, 60%. I feel like the last time that I did a VPD video, I didn't really cover too much about it. So that's why I'm trying to cover like a lot of the moisture stuff today. So aside from paying attention to your temperatures and humidity, make sure to keep in mind that the warm air will produce more humidity, even though it's the same number percentage. So I kind of wanted to reiterate what I was just saying, just so we're kind of clear so nobody gets confused with anything here because that could happen. Your VPD has everything to do with transpiration. It's the evaporation from the leaves. That alone is gonna increase the moisture in the air, but it's gonna lower the VPD levels because your lady's already transpiring, and the reason they do that is to cool itself down when they're under like really hot lights. It's almost like their way of sweating. The reason you sweat is so your body can stay cool. Well, it's the same thing for your ladies as well. You also gotta remember that the water that's gonna be in the air pockets of your soil, that's called hydrostatic pressure because the water that's chilling in those air pockets is pushing on the roots and that's why when you have too much water it compromises the oxygen levels for your roots and that's how overwatering happens the reason overwatering is such a bad thing is because your roots are not getting enough oxygen you're essentially just choking it out you're suffocating them bitches bro so a lot of the stuff that we're talking about when it comes to your vapor pressure the hydrostatic pressure watering your environment it's all relative towards each other they're all in sync with each other it all matters i feel like vpd is really important 
important at least to understand the reference of it and when you have a better understanding on how effective water is, whether it's your own water in the soil or your water vapor that's in the air. You tie all of that with the temperature and it's gonna make a huge difference with how your ladies look in the end. This is mostly true during the vegetative stage. I don't really see a lot of people having issues with humidity during the flowering stage. I almost feel like we try to keep it just a little bit lower. We're always afraid of tying the flowers with moisture, put that together. Everybody is all nervous about that. So it's mostly an issue during the vegetative stage because that's when I feel like a lot of people are like more lax when it comes to overwatering. Like I know it's a big deal, even in the vegetative stage, but I feel like people make it more of a big deal during the vegetative stage because during the flowering stage, everybody's trying to drop those humidity levels. You know what I'm saying? Also, it goes without saying to not forget that overwatering, whether it's through the soil at the bottom or through the air at the top, it's gonna stop your ladies from exponential growth. They're not gonna be able to uptake those nutrients, bro. So that's why it's really important to understand that fine line, especially during the seedling stage of how much water vapor and how much soil-based water you're giving your ladies because it's especially important to not go overboard. And I mean, it's really easy, especially during the seedling stage to go overboard and water more than you should be. It happens like all the time. So if you're running a bunch of seedlings and all of a sudden you get that like curly over water look and then you're like day 15, day 20 of veg, all of a sudden they're still looking kind of small. That's the whole problem. You're suffocating those roots. And trust me, I've been victim to this many times. You know, it, it just kind of happens. We just accidentally water just a little bit more than we should be. And then that's when you pay for it. For real, for real. I fall into this trap many times because if you've messed up your ceilings because of overwatering, I promise you, there are a lot of us that have been there. Even people that have been doing this for a long time. Like I've seen people hitting me up, telling me that they've been doing this for like five years or even more than five years, or even had a, you know, more than just a few runs under their belt telling me that they've had these overwatering issues with their seedlings so don't worry about it all right you're not alone <laughs> you know some people will flex on the internet they've never had these kind of issues but i promise you it's bullshit yes they have whether they admit it to it or not everyone does it's not a big deal another big thing is having your humidifier really close to your seedlings that's another problem that's often overlooked by a lot of beginners because a lot of beginners think about humidity like they just think about the overall humidity that's in their grow space but they're not thinking about stuff like the water vapor it's you know the humidifier being really too close to your seedlings the problem with that is when it's too close to your seedlings the stomata is going to collect all that water vapor it doesn't matter it's more of a problem the closer your humidifier the closer all that air vapor is pouring out to your seedlings that i've had that problem so many times i've had growth literally stop because of that and i'm sure many people have as well so be sure to not only pay attention to your vpd levels but make sure to pay attention on the location of your humidifier because that's going to play a major difference that could be the difference between getting growth early on and just like getting stop growth early on and then you're having you know your leaves start yellowing out so i kind of want you guys to try to get in the mindset of paying more attention and being aware of where your humidifier is pay more attention to the humidity the environment also pay attention to whether the air is warm or the wear is cooler i'm sure most of us is going to have warm hair because it's the summertime you know even when you got some ac going i feel like most of us don't have acs in the grow room or you don't have a window for the proper location so i kind of want to just give you guys that bit of information just to keep you guys informed on how important vpd is how important your environmental conditions are because all of that is tied with your vpd and it's great to use as a reference point as well so keep in mind all the information that i told you guys today and let me know in the comment section below what are your experiences or if you found this video really helpful add that in the comment section below now before we close off today's video i want to thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on patreon i really appreciate the love and support we've gotten a whole bunch of new patreon members checking out the new sour d run so i really appreciate all that love and support especially you new cats that have been coming on the channel to everyone else be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and most importantly this is like the most important thing in the entire video turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and i hope everyone has a great rest of their weekend and as always stay safe peace